Hello, today we're going to build a simple DC network, this one here. It comprises of five resistors, and we've got two parallel banks, R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5. Okay? And we're going to build, we're going to build this circuit on something called breadboard. And what I've done with this breadboard is I've, uh, I've ripped off a bit off the back so you can see what it looks like from behind. Well, this is what breadboard looks like on the other side. What we have, if I get my finger in here, we have rows of co conductors running horizontally here. And on the outside, we have vertical rows of conductors. The idea is that we use the outside vertical conductors, the ones that are going this way, to connect our power supply and ground to. And our components will connect across the horizontal conductors. There's no point in trying to connect them on the same track this way because you'll just get short circuits. If we're using chips or anything like that, we connect them across this side and this side. So there's a gap in the middle so the pins of the chips don't short circuit. So what we've got here is a resistor and you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four bands on this resistor. The band on the far right is a gold band and that indicates the resistor has a tolerance of plus or minus five percent. From the resistor colour code, the band on the left here is blue and the blue from the resistor colour code is six. The next band along is grey. Grey is eight. Finally we have a brown band as the third band and that's the amount of zeros you add. So from the resistor colour code that would be one zero to add to this value. If for example this band here was red we would add two zeros, if it was orange we would add three zeros and so on. So the value of this resistor is 680 ohms. I've got it connected up to my multimeter. This is the multimeter itself. I'm just going to zoom in a, a bit on this. The first thing you, you need to do is you need to set it to resistance. So you've got a little um, resistance range here and the little notch on the dial, that's resistance. And what you normally do with, with um, any of these readings is you set it to the highest range possible first of all. And you just make sure that both probes, one goes to common, one goes to voltage at the bottom there. That's for measuring resistance and voltage. You switch it on, okay, and this range is so high it's actually showing no resistance at all. But as we begin to range it down further, we begin to see that we start to get a reading. And the further down you go, the more accurate it becomes. Until eventually you go so far, in this case you can't go any further down, but if you were to go a little bit further down, if you had high range resistor, you'd read a one on here, and that would mean it'd be out of range, so you'd notch it one back up. And this one's reading 98.2, okay? Now, I said that, now I said that the resistor was 100 ohms, but resistors have something known as tolerance. It's impossible to make a resistance that is an exact 100 ohms, for example. Uh, the resistors we use have a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. So for 100 ohms, the resistor I'm using could be as little as 95 ohms or as much as 105 ohms. In this case, it's 98.2, something we, we need to be aware of. This is a close-up of the circuit you're going to make. We note, if I get my finger in here, we note that the resistors go, as we said, across the parallel tracks that I've just shown you. Um, resistor colour code which you're going to use and we note that the resistors join on the same track at the top these two resistors and they're in parallel remember the definition of parallel is current has more than one path then they join in the middle all five join in the on the middle track and then the other three join down the bottom track here okay so we've got our circuit here I've got my multimeter and it's set to ohms I'm going to take one of the probes yeah, there it is. 
and that's going to connect it doesn't matter which way around you do this okay that's going to connect to the top bank of resistors and the other probe's going to connect to the other bank of resistors like that it's just going to be like that top and bottom okay and then remember what we said about the multimeter so we just range it down and keep going all the way and this circuit has a resistance of 45.6 ohms which is quite strange when you think about it because one resistor on its own has a resistance of 100 ohms yet the entire circuit has a resistance of 45.7 ohms and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through we've got a very nice close-up of the circuit with the um, what you can see there at the moment the voltage applied to the circuit. Um, we're going to quickly show you the power supply as well. Now this is very interesting because the power supply is set up at very close to 5 volts. On the right here as I'm looking at it you'll see the current is um, 118 milliamps so that's quite significantly out from our calculation even where we rounded up the resistance. Um, whilst we're at it power supply, main switch on Current must be switched on here, on this one, here. Um, positive, uh, positive and negative. Um, we've got coarse voltage control and fine voltage control. And I'm just going to adjust the fine voltage control here. Get it in shot. And we get that close to 5 volts, like so. This is the whole circuit here. Um, the meter on the right is reading current. And the meter on the left is reading voltage. Now you'll notice that the power supply itself says it's got a voltage of 5 volts but our meter reading gives us 5.46 volts. That means that the voltmeter in the power supply is uncalibrated and it actually needs to go away to be calibrated. It's giving a false reading and quite a significant difference. Two things to mention also at this point. When we measure current, it must be in series. So I'm going to trace through the current, the way that we measure current. So if we look through, from, we go from the power supply here, there's my finger, found it in the end, and that comes out and it goes to the amps in, this one here. And we make sure that on the meter itself, we're on amps DC there. Just zoom right in on that. There we are, amps DC. Then we come out of the common of the meter, we trace that round and into our circuit there. And then the other side comes out to the other side of the circuit and that goes back to the power supply there. This is very difficult to do. <laughs> so current's measured in series, but voltage, which is this one here, is measured. So we've got both of our voltage leads. Um, we set up for volts DC over here, voltage positive, the common connection, and they are measured in parallel. So these two connections here, this one here and this one here, are measuring the voltage applied across the circuit. Here's our basic setup. Um, looking at the power supply, I've adjusted that so, it, so that even though it reads 4.52 volts, when you check it with the meter, it's 5 volts now. Firstly, we look at our voltage dropped across the parallel bank, and that's 1.98 volts, very close to what we calculated. And the connection itself on the circuit is, here is R4 and R5, and we simply go across them like this. So that's the voltmeter connected up there. We get right in close so you can see that. Look at the shakes. This is the current connected up here. Once again, notice the difference. And the current is reading on the scale, so we're on a 20 milliamp scale here, the current's reading 9.37 milliamps. So that's once again very close to our calculation. Looking on the circuit itself, we've got the current comes in, so there's, there's the power going into the circuit. It comes through here goes into the meter there, it comes out of the meter, 
And what I've done is I've, if you can see it, what I've done is I've just disconnected the, um, the resistor and connected the ammeter to that. So the current's got to flow through that resistor and it's got to be in series. That's about it. That's all you need to do to complete this outcome.